Imagine being turned to stone while you're taking a dump, while you're eating, while you're having sex. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode. Yes, another review here at A Week in Geekdom. My name is Joanna Menendez, and this time we're going to be talking about Dr. Stone, the first volume of the Shonen Jump manga. This, of course, is written by Richiro Inagaki and art by Boichi. And if you don't know what Dr. Stone is, it is a very interesting title. Let me tell you why. Imagine a world where this unforeseen, unknown calamity occurs and sort of this apocalypse where every single human being in the face of the earth gets petrified. They get turned into stone. And it isn't until several years later where humanity wakes up again from that disaster and they are trying to figure out how to prevent it from happening again. That, in a nutshell, is Dr. Stone. You follow the main characters, Taiju and Senku. Taiju is this big oaf, as Senku likes to call him, where, uh, you know, he's not extremely smart, but he has heart, passion, and brawn, and it's gonna come in handy in this post-apocalyptic uh, situation that we find ourselves in. And by we, I mean the human species, the human race. Senku, on the other hand, is this uh, maniacal uh, shonen lead. He is a uh, science nut. He is a scientist. I think they were in uh, high school or something like that. And he's like this prodigy or something. And when the calamity hits, Senku is, I believe, or as of the, we're led to believe in this first volume, he is the first to wake up after many years. I thought it was like a hundred years later or something like that. No, it turns out it is actually thousands of years later. It's another century when humanity wakes up. And these characters, you know, when uh, the joke is that you turn to stone, so everything stops and all this uh, change occurs throughout the planet. And it is fantastic to see. But the joke being that uh, you sort of lost track of time and it's, you know, it, it's time standing still. So the characters now have to figure out how exactly they are going to uh, bring humanity up to speed, wake everybody up, and advance the human race to the point where they left off and continue that expansion. And it, it's all through the power of science. If you like science and ingenuity and uh, apocalyptic tales, then this might be the story for you. It is sprinkled with humor throughout. And on occasions, the scene transitions between chapters isn't exactly the smoothest. Like something might be happening, and then on the dime, something else. And I don't, I don't know. It may just be uh, that it's uh, a manga that's first starting or something. But it's not as smooth as I would have liked, or I would have uh, enjoyed um, a little bit more time. Uh, with certain things like acquiring uh, guano, for example, which they, it, they might use it to uh, do like this uh, acidic potion or something that will corrode the stone and, and free people, stuff like that. I would have enjoyed taking just a, an extra little bit of time with it, but I do understand the demographic and I do understand that you kind of have to keep the, the ball rolling to entertain uh, a certain crowd and, and keep the story action packed and funny and all that stuff. Actually, one of the sweetest things about this book is the character of Taiju and his devotion not only to his friend when he wakes up, I think, uh, several months after uh, our kooky scientist is that when the thing was about to happen he had this massive crush on a, a girl and he's trying to look for her uh, to see if she's still there and all that stuff I won't spoil what happens but it is a very sweet and heartwarming thing amidst all the jokes and all that stuff I found it really cool plus uh, the interaction between these guys they obviously have a friendship even though one of them is like super smart and the other one not so much 
uh, it's very endearing and very uh, you know it's 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 a bromance that I enjoy. There is an antagonist. Uh, aspect of this series which you will have to read on to find out but it is pretty freaking interesting and goes into like the deconstruction of human society in the face of something as apocalyptic as a mass extinction event because take a minute and realize like you might uh, on like I've what happened with me at first glance you might be like okay so everybody uh, turned to stone Okay, so they wake up later. But think about it, and the manga goes into detail when the thing, the, the calamity first happens, trapped, and, and anxiety is, is setting in, like everything has stood still, they can't uh, focus, they can't breathe, they're losing consciousness. One character compared it to like having a stroke or something like that. So imagine that, plus people that got turned into stone uh, on a plane or in a boat, they're driving, they're on a train. It, it could lead, or does lead, I guess I should say, to a massive percentage of the population across the globe to uh, be extinguished just like that. Plus, with 100 or 200 years, you would think like uh, the settings would be the same, cities and all that stuff. They would just be covered with grass and nature would take over. No, it's actually thousands of years. So literally the whole landscape of Earth itself changes. There might be some recognizable uh, statues or landmarks or something. But for the most part, streets are gone. Everything's covered in grass, water, mountains, all that stuff. The wildlife uh, uh, grows and expands. Uh, animals that were in, zoo, uh, in zoos, they <laughs> escape and stuff like that. Our, uh, pets, our pets grow uh, feral. It's actually pretty freaking interesting. I would have maybe have liked to see something... Uh, again, this is because it is the Shonen Jump market. It, it has to appeal to certain demographics like I mentioned earlier but I would have liked if the story gone I would have gone just a, a tiny little bit more uh, darker and the ramifications and implications and all that stuff but the cool aspect of Dr. Stone here I have the uh, first volume once again is the fact that there is going to be this uh, new renaissance of, of, of scientific exploration. Our scientist Senku has this awesome epic goal of restoring uh, humanity to the way it was and using the cleverness and the uh, skills that he knows as a scientist to do it, using the power of science and, and hypothesis and experimentation and all that stuff, bringing everybody from the Stone Age as uh, to the modern age, I, I should say to the modern technological age, as quickly as humanly possible and even faster because they don't know if that thing is going to happen again. So they have to work their butts off, not only to determine what happened, how to prevent it, and of course ensuring that it doesn't happen again and restoring as uh, many people as they can. So I really do think it is an awesome quirky title that you guys are going to enjoy. As for the art, it, it, it's spectacular. Some of the character models I'm not a huge fan of. It's not uh, one of my uh, personal tastes in manga and stuff, but it looks great. It, the art is serviceable uh, a, a good chunk of the time. The landscapes are beautiful. It's just the character designs themselves that doesn't uh, don't do much for me, I should say. But overall, it's awesome. It looks great. It's bright. It's bright, crisp, clean, and just really cool looking. I uh, I cannot wait to read volume two and continue the series and see where the story goes. I think it's awesome and uh, I don't know. I would like for you to try it and let me know down below in the comments if you did read it and if you already have, what did you think of uh, Dr. Stone? So yeah, guys, thank you so much. Uh, follow me on your favorite social media platform and we can keep the conversation going. Thank you so much. God bless. I will see all of you on her next installment.